get this thing yanked off and uh, let's see what's under there. Hey guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to my shop. If you're following me over from Instagram, you know I've been working on a 2021 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. And if you're new here, let's get you all caught up. I originally built the 4Runner to be an off-road kind of overland vehicle. That was what my focus was kind of out of the gate. And I, I did that because I was thinking my wife and I were gonna do like a lot of camping just being out in the open country, right? Popping the rooftop tent. From that point, I was trying to figure out what to do with the 4Runner. And I, I was doing some research and I found out that the 4Runner actually, when it first came out in 2010, the engineers that built the 4Runner decided they wanted to run it in the Baja 1000, which was like insane to run a somewhat stock car uh, in that grueling of a race. And so the more research I did, the more excited I got about maybe building my own project, my own Baja project. So I ordered up a full suspension kit. I actually ordered it from Total Chaos. I did their plus three and a half inch long travel control arms in the front, their King suspension. It was a pretty involved project. It involved a lot of welding, but I think I have this project to thank for really getting my welding skills up to par. I had already ordered a Pro Charger kit because I figured, okay, I'm stacking all of this stuff onto the 4Runner and adding in all these parts. It's gonna be a super heavy truck. So let's throw some more power at it. I realized very quickly that there was no tuning support for anything newer than a 2019. And this is a 2021, so I wasn't able to tune it. So I was super disappointed. I had spent all that time and effort working on it. And I decided, okay, while it's down, while I'm waiting for tune support, I'm just gonna go at it. I'm gonna build it so when it's ready, when the tune support comes out, it's ready to go run. And I figured, okay, I need to do the rear suspension as well. So I put the Total Chaos rear control arms in. I was hoping to get travel somewhat similar to what I had in the front, because the front, the travel is actually pretty good. And I took it out and I actually was really disappointed. I'd done everything outside of upgrading the rear suspension that I wanted to do. So once I got that call for the tune support, I was super excited. I spent pretty much all night the night before the dyno session installing parts and getting the fuel system ready. And then I ran home, took a quick shower, and then I had to come back to the shop to uh, get this thing up on a tow truck. We pull it off the truck and I shake hands with the tuner. He had flown in the night before. We get it strapped up on the dyno. We start doing the first pulls and you know, things are running pretty rich. It was super hot that day. It was like 103 outside, I think. And it was 100 something in the shop. It was hot, hot and it reeked like fuel. It was running pretty rich most of the day as we kind of worked the fuel trims down. But at the end of the day, we were able to do a, a full speed run, do a power pull. I think we were making about 310 to the wheel. That wasn't the goal that I wanted to hit, but I was excited about the next day because the next day was power day. That's the day we were gonna make all of the power. I woke up in the morning, jumped out of bed. I was ready to go, bought some energy drinks, bought everybody breakfast, and I met them down at the shop. And I was like pumped, I was shouting, I was like jacked up, trying to get everybody excited for the day. Uh, we threw the new intake on there and then it was time for the power poles. It starts going and it, it gets loud quick. Dinos are loud and I'm, I'm listening to the 4Runner just start howling and I watch the horsepower tick up at 160, 200, 220, 240, 260, 300, 313 and then poof. Bang. And instantly I think, uh, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Did I did I not install something correctly? All three of us were kind of crawling around underneath the 4Runner. I think I noticed it at the same time as one of the other guys there. There was a rod poking out of the motor. At that point, kind of all of my excitement left my body and uh, I realized that our dyno session was done and it was time to unstrap the 4Runner, roll it off and call a tow truck. At that point I knew, okay, it's time to start really focusing on the contingency plan. So I made some calls pretty much immediately. Dan at Rad Industries, he was able to help me put together a motor and transmission. So without further ado, I do wanna get into tearing down the motor. Afterwards, we'll talk a little bit more about what direction the 4Runner's going.
All right, to start things off, I'm gonna pull apart the bottom of the motor first. I'm gonna pull off the oil pan. I wanna see what's in there. I wanna see what kind of carnage fell to the bottom. So after that, we're gonna pull off the heads, starting with uh, the side here on my right, your left, and I'm gonna pull off this side, and we're gonna see what the tops of the pistons look like. So let's pull off the lower oil pan, and let's see what the oil pickup looks like. See if anything's caught in it. So what we've got is we have a ton of debris and like metal shavings. Like this thing really came apart and in a very dramatic fashion. We even have like, there's like chunks of probably like a rod in there. The pickup looks relatively clean though. There's not, there's like some, obviously some metal in there, but there's nothing like blocking it. So let's get the rest of the oil pan off and let's see really what, uh, what the rest of this looks like. Oh my God. Well, quite a bit of junk in, or was quite a bit, still is. Quite a bit of junk in there. So obviously we have had some catastrophic failure. There is all sorts of junk, which you kind of show you so you can see like this stuff right here, that shouldn't, that's not like a hole for weight savings or like oil or anything. That is something went right through that sheet metal. So let's figure out what that was. I have my suspicions. All right, so we've got the, uh, the oil pan off. Now we're just looking down on the block and you can see down in here, is that a zip tie? We've got all sorts of junk. It looks like, oh, yep, there we go. You can see this rod here is snapped off like pretty much completely at the base. So let's pull that thing out. Let's see what that thing looks like. All right, we've been waiting for this for a while. All right, from the looks of it, I really only see like one rod that actually looks broken in here. So, not honestly not as catastrophic as i thought it would be i thought it would be quite a bit worse i thought we'd see maybe some super bent rods or something but i mean obviously nothing looks good in here but if we're calling it as we see it, it could be a lot worse Let's see if we can get this might need an extension all right Come on out. There we go. Yep. Oh, I, I, I lost it down there. All right, so there's the, that's the bottom cap of the rod. And now let's try to fish out that other rod. Maybe I can use one of the holes on the side of the block. played the game operation this is kind of like the same thing all right there's the dramatic dramatic reveal holy crap just so we are all on the same page there's a little bit missing like that's yeah she gone all right, well, I don't see any other uh, rods in here that are bent or broken, so I'm gonna flip it back over. That sound, that's the sound of broken dreams. All right, so we need a triple square. We're gonna pull this head off. Let's see what it looks like in there. <laughs> oh, 
How's she look? Eh. Whoa. Looks pretty unhappy. There's a lot of metal. So there's not really much to see on this side. Wonder, uh, I wonder if the other side's gonna have a little more to tell, because this side, or a gasket out of there. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of stuff in the cylinders, but not really that much, honestly. Let's flip her over and see what the other side has to show us. All right. This thing out of the way. Holy, what? Dude, there is nothing but shards. <laughs> it's hard to believe that that used to be a piston. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of what I was expecting to see throughout the whole motor, honestly. Like, we've got rings, like everything. Look at that. It's gone. That'll buff out, I guess, right? I mean, there's not really anything, there's like stuff like jammed down in there, but there's not really much else I'm gonna be able to pull out. I mean, it is completely gone. All right, so we pulled out all the bits from the Forerunner, and after looking at everything, it's not really that easy to look at one specific thing and say, that's that was it, that's what failed. Uh, but now that we have everything out, it's very clear that, all right, we are on to plan B. It's time to put in the contingency plan. We're not rebuilding the GR. We could go that route, however, Building a GR is extremely expensive. It's very difficult to actually make the power goals that I would really love to make. So the contingency plan is to turn one of the most recognizable forerunners into the craziest pre-runner forerunner build I can possibly put together.